June 2020, Apple introduces the transition of its Macs to Apple Silicon. Developers get Mac Minis with A12Z iPad chips inside, but this year's iPhone A17 chip is likely to be faster in multi-core than the M1, which changed the computer industry just a couple of years ago. So is it time to start putting A chips in a Mac? Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. It might not be as crazy as you think. And the joy of how Apple now builds their chips using the same cores across the whole company is huge for compatibility and scalability. The vast majority of people don't need all the power that Macs offer. Even the majority of the tech media spend most of their time in Slack and a web browser, far more than they do in Final Cut or 3D rendering packages like Blender. And yet, the least powerful Mac in the Apple Silicon world, the M1 is still destroying most mainstream PC laptops several years after it was released. Now, Apple is quite capable of putting their latest A chips into a budget product just a few months after the flash phone gets them. Now think about the iPhone SE. It's an older shell with current tech on the inside for around $400. But if we look back in the archives, let's grab an old product shell, say the 2015 12-inch MacBook, and throw an A17 in it next spring. Now the A17, by all accounts, is likely to be built on TSMC's latest 3 nanometer process node, which means better efficiency and speed. Better efficiency means longer battery life from smaller batteries and less heat, both of which are super important in a laptop substantially smaller than the MacBook Air and similarly free of cooling fans. Now it's not to say that the 12-inch MacBook was a perfect system, it absolutely wasn't. It was, however, one of the first products from any manufacturer to use USB-C and it went all in on that with it being the single port that was used to connect peripherals and to charge it and with just a headphone jack on the opposite side. This was the start of dongle gate. But the system was let down by the processor and that's the main change that could resurrect it. It also had the infamous butterfly keyboard and it in fact debuted that as well. I guess it's got quite a lot to answer for. That being said, many of the Apple designs that use the same keyboard then have now switched back to scissor switches, so it's probably not a huge engineering problem to overcome. And of course it was quite high priced when it came out, but that was probably due to the fact that it had a retina display, which the MacBook Air didn't at the time. It needed to be a little bit more expensive to make sense of that. Retina displays are everywhere now. So would an A17 really be enough to run a MacBook? When Apple rechristened what would have been the A14X as the M1, there were some additions, most importantly the hypervisor support and Thunderbolt controller. Now by all accounts, the iPhone 15 Pro is likely to get Thunderbolt built in, so that's nice and easy. Support will already be there. But does hypervisor actually need to be there? It's a system for virtualization and I think the most basic of basic laptops from Apple. I think you could justify not putting it there and not having support for virtualization, for parallels and things like that. Even now we're a few years in, Rosetta 2 could probably be done away with on the base models. Now when Apple Silicon first arrived, of course, it was a vital stepping stone. But having just checked my account monitor while writing this script, there is not a single Rosetta process running on my system. And I think Apple Silicon is mature enough now that it's a nice to have and not something mission critical. I'd even argue that the system could be limited to a single display, either the internal one or a 5K studio display, so you could kind of clamshell it and use it with another screen if you wanted to use external Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, for example, or just allow mirroring so they both show the same. That will lift some of the pressure on the GPUs. Now, of course, the A series chips can certainly support universal control, as it does on the base level iPads. So a workaround would be placing your 12 inch MacBook on a desk and working on it as well as a couple of displays attached to a Mac mini or something similar on the desk using just the MacBook's keyboard and trackpad for your interface. And what could such a MacBook cost? Now, this is the important part. I think if I was Apple, I'd be targeting a price of between $750 and $799. That leaves a clear gap underneath the MacBook Air with M1 at $999, which I think is going to be a place taken by the uh, M2 MacBook Air when the M3 comes out. But it also has clear differences in terms of capability and would be designed to be specifically like either an add-on device for those with a full desktop setup at home or those wanting to dip a toe into the MacBook ecosystem like students on a budget who might well work off cloud accounts and even schools that want a little more from their classroom computers than just a Chromebook. And I suppose the question is, 
if an iPhone chip can power a laptop, where is Apple's answer to the DeX? That might be a pipe dream, but let me know, would this interest you? If you're an iPhone user right now and you've never used a Mac before, would this tempt you to change over? Is the laptop a thing of the past anyway, and is the future just in touch tablets and phones? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks to all the Patreons, and we'll see you in the next one. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell.